Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. You know, I was going to call this one the other best replay of the week after yesterday's amazing World of Tanks battle. Uh, but yesterday's amazing World of Tanks battle could just have equally have been a Game of Throws in World of Tanks, and this is definitely <laughs> a Game of Throws in World of Warships. So a Game of Throws it is, at least you know what you can expect to see. But that's the thing about a Game of Thrones. I mean, you'd think that there'd be no surprises, because, you know, the title does kind of give it away. But the only thing that you know when you start watching one of these videos is that one of the team is going to throw. Might be the enemy team, might be the friendly team. You don't know until you see it. And the exact way that the throw happens isn't always obvious from the start of the battle. So, uh, I do like to keep you guessing a little. Anyway, the star of today's show in the not quite as tier 8 as I may have led you to believe in a previous video, uh, tier 6 German battlecruiser the Mackensen, is Jeff the Shark from the Waifu clan. So, the Mackensen. Um, World War One battlecruiser was, and yet at the same time wasn't actually built. They started construction of these ships as the uh, uh, development of the Derflinger class. Originally, the Kaiser wanted them armed with 380mm or 15-inch guns. The chief of the German Navy wanted 12-inch guns. They decided on a compromise. It's armed with an odd calibre, 350mm guns. These are not quite 14-inch. They're like 13.7, 13.8. They're still pretty good. Uh, construction of the ships was never completed because the war ended and the steel used for the construction had been diverted to build more U-boats. Which was probably the right decision, given the threat that the U-boats posed um, and the threat that the German surface fleet didn't pose after the Battle of Jutland. Uh, but too little, too late, ended up not actually making any difference. But here they are in World Warships. So they did exist, they were just never completed. It's not a bad ship, actually. I mean, it, it is a World War One design, so it's never going to be especially fast. At least, not by the standards of actual World War II era fast battleships, but it's definitely not slow. Top speed, 28 knots, which is pretty impressive for a ship of this size and vintage. Firepower, as already discussed, eight 350mm guns mounted in four twin turrets. The rear turret in particular is especially good. You see there how far back to the rear of the hull it's mounted which means it gets excellent clearance and can rotate a full 360 degrees. So with heavy angling, you can actually still get at least three quarters of your guns firing at a target ahead. The gun arrangement is very, very nice. As far as the survivability is concerned, it's not bad actually. Uh, she's got a very large health pool. And her armour is definitely superior to that of her predecessor, the Derflinger, which only featured 19mm of plating, 4 and aft. This thing gets 25. Now it's still going to make it vulnerable to cruiser high explosive and potential overmatch by higher tier battleship armour piercing, but she definitely enjoys much better protection than the Derflinger, as well as that big fat health pool. However, she is still just a battle cruiser, and while her belt is thicker and her bow and stern plating is thicker, she is still just a battle cruiser. You do not want to be exposing broadside in this thing to anything on with battleship caliber guns. They will hurt. I'm not sure exactly what Jeff's initial plan was. It looked like he was going to head over there to Cap Circle Charlie to assist the two friendly cruisers and destroyer against the two enemy cruisers. But, well, you know, three against two, they should be able to handle it. Oh boy. <laughs> that Duca d'Osta just obliterated both of them. I mean, it looked like Jeff was thinking, nope, they've got this, and then very quickly they didn't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they managed to lose as badly as they did over there, but it's going to get worse before it gets better. Observe the destroyer, the Jianwei, closing in on the Duca d'Osta, who just got himself two devastating strikes, a close quarters expert award, and a double strike. He's closing to within, at most, three kilometres from that Italian cruiser and manages to miss with every single <laughs> torpedo. <laughs> and he's basically just gifted the Duca d'Alster his third kill. Unbelievable. The team are now down to 85 
points. They've lost five ships in less than five minutes. And remember, nothing happens in the first two minutes. Everybody's getting into position. I don't know if the Duca Dosta's success was skill or just dumb luck, because, I mean, he clearly knows that Jeff's coming because it's his aircraft that have spotted him. And yet he's just sitting there without his engine running, broadside on, in front of these 350 millimeter guns. You know what? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he did just get three kills. And it's entirely possible that his engine got knocked out in the exchange and there was nothing he could do about that. And he didn't get much warning that Jeff was coming. So we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But that kill has just put Jeff's team back up to 120 points. Don't worry, it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to get a lot worse. Jeff trying to get the rear turret firing there. Maybe take out the Pensacola. I mean, it's unlikely, but you never know. Probably need to be a double set at all in order for that to happen, though. Eh, yeah. oh, it was a hit. It'll do. Oh, and the team have just lost an Omaha and a Farragut, meaning they are now down seven ships and they have been reduced to 25 points. One more loss and this game is already over. And the Hawkins knows that Jeff is coming because Jeff was spotted and the Hawkins is shooting at him. And he knows, therefore, that there's a battle cruiser with eight 350mm guns coming around the corner. So naturally, because he doesn't want to get obliterated in a single oh, salvo, he's going to be angling up and using that heavy cruiser. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would he? <laughs> he might live if he bothered. And his torpedoes aren't going to surprise anybody. Jeff's got his hydro running, so... <laughs> Two torpedoes weren't going to sink a Mackinson in the first place. Ah, uh, well. Let's put the team back up to 60 points. Wow, 60 whole points. The enemy team are now only 400 points ahead. <laughs> Well, for the moment, there's nothing left for Jeff to shoot at, which is fine, because it means he can flip this capture circle uh, without any interference. But it is also not fine, because it means that, for the meantime at least, it's down to the rest of the team. <laughs> All four of them. <laughs> oh, they've managed to get a kill. Now they're only outnumbered five to eight. It was, of course, only a matter of time. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, you know, good news, bad news. They just did just get two kills uh, at the cost of a further teammate. There's now only four of them left against seven enemies. They're not quite outnumbered two to one. This is fine. So if you could all just stop dying now, chaps, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. It is taking Jeff some time to get back into the fight, though. I mean, it's not his fault. He hasn't been doing nothing. He's flipped this cap circle at Charlie. He's, this is the only cap circle that the team possess. But while the Mackinson isn't really slow, you know, it's not a New Mexico or a Colorado. It's only really fast-ish in a straight line. And he has had to round the southern corner of the island here, which has dropped the speed down to 22, 24 knots. They've just lost the New York, which puts them back down to double-digit scores. He's got some shots out at the submarine there. It looks like only one or... Oh, two. Two shots hit the target. Good enough. Two was all it took. There are now, however, only three surviving members of the team against six enemies. All three of whom are in the same division. Something of a good news, bad news situation. First, they are outnumbered two to one. Second, while they are now back up into triple figure scores thanks to the kill on the submarine and the capture of uh, Cap Circle Charlie, the enemy team are more than 300 points ahead with double the kills and double the Cap Circles. A kill would be useful. Request approved. <laughs> <laughs> um, a detonation on the Konigsberg. Honestly, probably didn't really need the detonation. The double Citadel and penetrations would have probably done the trick, but we'll take it. More of those, please. Everybody else, stay alive. That's a very suspicious looking smoke screen though, isn't it? That, that wasn't the Konigsberg. The enemy team do still have two destroyers. Which one is it? That would be the smally boat that got spotted and had its cheeks clapped at the start of the battle. And the fact that he's still in the fight, despite that happening, does speak well of him. However, he is lurking around inside a smokescreen while a battle cruiser with hydro running is closing in on him. 
Um, you know, to be fair to him, he doesn't necessarily realise that the Mackinson has hydro, but he knows now. Hopefully he'll bear that in mind for the next time. Anyway, another kill. The team are now back up to more than 200 points. What's going on? Now, he did, of course, get spotted instantly by the Farragut the second he left the smokescreen. So the fact that he's rounding the corner of this island here shouldn't become as a surprise to anybody. Yes, New Mexico, I'm looking at you here. <laughs> really? <laughs> of course, Jeff knew he was there, thanks to the spotting being provided by the uh, cachalot in the division. But the New Mexico was really lucky to not get Citadel and didn't even have its guns pointing in this direction. Of course, Jeff was careful to angle as much as he could while he came around the corner, so the chances of his getting Citadel in this situation were extremely slim. Unfortunately, while he has weathered the initial salvo of return fire from the New Mexico, they have just lost another ship, which means it's just Jeff and the Cachalot. Oh, Jeff, you're showing. Ooh, I don't know. There's, there's... You might want to nose in an angle because this next salvo from the New Mexico could really hurt. You are just a battle cruiser after all, not a battleship. You're giving a lot of broadside there. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, that, that. That was bad. Again, though, because I'm in a generous mood today, I think I think Jeff was entirely aware of the risk he was taking there. But because he was going so slow, he just couldn't get the nose turned around in time. He was actually trying to nose in. And the reason he was going so slow, because he didn't want to fight the New Mexico and the New York at the same time. Which, yeah, I can, I can see the method to his madness there. If that was his plan... I can see the logic behind it, because he would have expected to have Citadel and blown the New Mexico out of the water before things got to this stage, but, well, he didn't, and he got his cheeks clamped because of it. The New York, however... Oh dear. <laughs> um, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I mean, Jeff's taken no chances here. He's not given the New York any kind of flat surfaces to shoot at here. The same cannot be said of the New York. <laughs> Although, you know, they could, it could still get him. Yeah, that fire came at the worst possible moment. There goes the damage control. Holy crap, one and a half thousand health. Die, please. No, no, die more than that. And die now. Get the next turret up quick before he can return fire. And gotcha. That's kill number six, by the way. He already earned the Kraken. He is on fire, though. Oh, and he was looking not to get a second fire. A second fire would have ended him there because the damage control's on cooldown and the heal probably wouldn't have been able to keep pace with the amount of damage from the fire. But he's gone undetected. Unfortunately, he is now the last ship left alive on the team. The enemy team have double the ships, double the caps, and double the score. And when this fire goes out, oh, this is going to be awfully close. He has slightly less <laughs> than 600 hit points remaining. Now is not the time to get adventurous. He needs to wait uh, for the heal to come back off cooldown. Fortunately, he's in a good position to do that. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's slowing down. He's in no rush to leave the shelter of the island over there. The bad news, he can probably get back up to about 5,000 hit points when that heal comes off cooldown and he uses it, which isn't a lot. And he's facing a destroyer who has four kills and a cruiser who has one kill, both of them outspotted. He's still got one charge of Hydro left. Enemy team have a choice here. Even though there's still more than six minutes of the battle left, with two cap circles, and they're both faster and stealthier than him, they could just run the clock out. Or they could go for it and try to finish him off when he's on low health. He's spotted. That must be the Farragut. They're trying to finish him off when he's on low health. Farragut's been spotted. If the Farragut gets another fire here, uh, as long as it's not a double fire, he should be all right. But if the Dallas starts shooting at him as well... Okay. Right, the Farragut can still see him because he fired. But the fact that there's no shots coming in from the Dallas means that the Dallas either doesn't have the line of sight or he's out shooting range. Oh, the Farragut's still chipping away at him while he's detected. He's gone undetected. No additional fire. 
Oh, crap. There's the Dallas. He needs to try to take the Dallas out. He's got the Hydro running. The problem is that even though the Dallas is a light cruiser, and is given perfect broadside for him to shoot at, I've always found the Dallas to be remarkably resilient. It's next to impossible to sit at all those things. I just don't know why. But he's accelerating now. He's got the island between himself and the Dallas, so it's just him and the Farragut, who is now spotted thanks to the Hydro. And even though he's inside torpedo range, because Jeff had kept the spur of the island there between himself and the Farragut, it was not in a position to launch torpedoes. It looked like it was backing away there and trying to turn an angle to get torpedoes away. But Jeff's careful positioning made that, well, just not an option for the Farragut until the last possible second, at which time it was just too late. It's now one-on-one. -on -one. With four minutes left, a 300-point lead and two cap circles, and all of those islands over there to duck into cover behind, the Dallas should absolutely now be turning around, running away and running the clock down. Because even though Jeff only has 3,600 hit points remaining, that's about the same amount of health as the Dallas currently has, and Jeff has a heal that's about to come off cooldown, and the Farragut has provided this handy little smoke screen for him to use as he comes around the corner. Let's see what happens as the center line of Jeff's ship clears the boundary of the smoke screen and he's able to spot something. Yep, the Dallas chose violence. Because <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> There's an island right there he could have been hiding behind. <laughs> nah, nah. No, I'll take on the battle cruiser instead with my poxy little 152mm guns. Jeff would like to thank the Dallas, without whose contribution this could have still been a defeat. Um, although it's not fair to blame the Dallas. I mean, you know, this was definitely a team result <laughs> in every sense of the word. How the hell do you manage to lose when you're that far ahead that early in the game? I mean, with five minutes gone, Jeff's team were down to 25 points. And yet somehow... <laughs> Oh, I do love this video series. <laughs> it never fails to entertain and amuse. Congratulations, Jeff the Shark, for dragging your team, kicking and screaming over the finish line, and congratulations to the enemy team for, once again, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Hope you all enjoyed today's battle, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.